Hey, good afternoon or evening, everyone. Um, I apologize for the delays today, but it's just been a busy day, and I had to take off and take care of some other things. But um, welcome back to the journey. Uh, we're on episode three, uh, I think. Yes, episode three um, of a many week series of um, presentations and uh, postings at our event. Uh, we are going to move much of this material off of our um, regular Mira site and we're going to do it over here in the events. And I'm here to help you today with Jet Match Matches. Okay, so I'm building a worksheet and I, I hope that you all printed one off. Um, you should have one like this to work through. Uh, just for now. This is just a draft and I'm going to continue to work through this Though we have found some discrepancies on this cheat sheet So this may change and this may be get updated as well What I did is I went to Genesis and I ran a comparison between my father Make sure it was through my dad Yes, through my dad, whose kit number is G42845. And Brandon Nash, whose kit number, and now this is a Genesis number, and so you have to have Genesis to do this, is AQ62627. Four, seven. And I will take a picture or I will scan the report that we got. But basically this is what we're going to, I'm going to use this as my guide on the board to show you how to work through a match, a jet match, and accomplish something as far as your pedigrees go. All right. So, first we've got pod, red bone, and pod is my dad, Carl Stringer, but however, a lot of people don't know him by Carl, they know him by pod because he's been called Pod since he was a baby. So that is his nickname, but his actual name is Carl Stringer. And um, his Jed match number is G. Four, two, eight. I can't hardly see it. I've gotten sublime. Four, five, three, and we're comparing to Brandon Nash, whose kit number is A Q six two. Seven four seven. Seven four seven. Now this is the results that we got when when we compared our kids. It's that part. Okay, we share a hit on chromosome one. at 18, 18.3, this is your centimorgans, this is actually a small c, okay, and chromosome one, 
equals 12.2. Okay, and then on chromosome 7 equals 37.9 centimorgan, and that is the only segments we show matching. Okay. A half match, well, the largest segment is equals, and at Genesis they tell you what that equals, 1.905% shared DNA. We have a total half match which equals 68.2 which also equals 1.905% shared data, uh, shared DNA. We have one full We have one full match. So we have one half match and one full match. Okay, which is right. Okay, so if you look at your cheat sheet right here where you have gotten your chromosome number one and chromosome number one, this is a full match. This is a half match. If you take your little cheat sheet over here, <coughs> and you look at your full match or your half match is 37.9. So look under your centimorgans. And that means that we're third cousins. And I'm going to write this in shorthand because you guys need to learn the shorthand on these. Um, third cousin once removed is C3, C, one R on this chart. So we're third cousins, once removed, right there. And then on our half match. See that doesn't look right. Why does it say chromosome three? I don't I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that. Why does the total half match equal sixty-eight point two? But up here it equals thirty-seven point nine. Uh, I'm not quite sure of that. That's something I'll have to find out. So I need to find out about that information. Why is this total less than this? If this is the half match and this is the half match. So that's something we gotta find out about. All right, 
Now our largest segment, oh I see, was 37.9. Total half match, 68.2. Yeah, that'd be 68.2, I guess. All right, so on chromosome one, we have a, a, a full match, a full sequence match on number one chromosome. So that would be how many sigmoid ends? Oh, let's add that up. Five. So 29.5, let's just go off of 29.5, which is the total between chromosome one. I, and I'm just guessing on that because this Genesis report is throwing me off a little bit, but regardless, 29.5 still would be within the third cousin once removed. Okay, third cousin once removed. All right, and so on your on your cheat sheet or your worksheet on your worksheet, you have a space here to add the chromosomes that you match and the total matching segments. And we're going to shorten this up and we're going to change this a little bit. But this is what we're using today for an example to work through this. Okay, so now what do I do? Whenever I get these matches and I've worked this out on my worksheet, all the matches, what chromosomes that we match on, one and seven, we have one full match and we have one half match. Okay, so now we're gonna sit down and we're gonna look at our own pedigree compared to Brandon's pedigree. So I'm going to take this off. If you want to make some more notes, I'll give you just a second. Let me grab something to drink. And now I'm going to clean this off. thing that I'm going to do because I know we're third cousins once removed. So that's one third, third cousin from actually my grandfather. So this is my father's Jed match. So I will start his pedigree at his, at him and not me. Okay. So Let's do Carl here. Then his mother was Robbie Looney Nash. I'm just going to work, well, I go ahead and work the stringer side too so that you can see how to work a pedigree as well. Because I think other people are struggling with pedigree. He's number one on a pedigree. And then we've got Leonard. He's number two. And she's number three. So the next generation would be number four, five, six, seven, like that. So Robbie Looney Nash, her mother was, or her father was Guide Nash. And her mother was Missouri Bowen. 
she was a Nash before she was married to Guy. So she was married to two Nashes. Y'all need to remember that because even though my grandmother was, my great grandmother, my dad's grandmother was married to God's first cousin first, she had three children with him who were also Nashes. So whenever we look at the census later on, that he, he passed away when they were very little and um, she remarried to God and had um, several more children, including my grandmother, Robbie Looney. All right, so Missouri Goins Nash. You know, I'm working the Nash side because he's a Nash. And and, and that would kind of explain things, make it a little bit easier. But now, most times, if you don't know where they're at, you may have to work your whole tree up there. So, Guide's father was Emmanuel. And I'm going to put his, this is not a formal name. This was, Command was a nickname like my dad's pod name. And um, his mother was Matilda Sweat. Or Tilly Sweat. And I'm gonna move my grandmother down just so, or my dad's grandmother down just a little bit so I got a little more room here. So his mother was, her mother was Missouri. Goins. Nash. Nash, and you know that. Okay, and then her father was William Collins Goins. Her mother was Amanda L. Sanford. Sanford. Okay. Now, Emmanuel Command's father was James. His mother was Mary Holly Perkins. James's father was Thomas. Oh, we call him Old Thomas, but he's really not old. I better not put that there. We call him Old Thomas, but really he, his father was also Thomas, so it's a little confusing. And his mother was Emily Slater. I think they actually spelled it. Slater, Slater, various spellings, but and we'll use later Nash. Okay. And then down here on William Collins Goins. Okay, so this is this is generation actually two, but we start with number one, two, three, four, five, five. So these are their numbers in, in what we call MRCA numbers, which is um, just a, a, a short for numbers, a call number in um, your genealogical program. Okay, so James was the son of Old Thomas and Emily Slater. And then Thomas also had a second wife. This is wife number one. And he also had another wife named Anna Goins. 
Okay. William Collins Gullins, his father was William F. Gullins. And now that William F. probably is a new thing. We just found this initial through uh, a lawsuit paperwork that named him with the middle initial F which he supposedly had a brother named William Fulton because this is that group of Goinses who were all named William and we've counted like 13 or 14 brothers that were all named William something. Well, we, we know there's a brother in there younger named William F who was William Fulton but my grandfather was older and so I don't know if it's the same man or not. We're going to have to find out. But in one of the lawsuits, it's dated him as William F. I don't know if that's right or not. Okay, so William Collins' mother was Delia Nash. I know, right? <laughs> but that's the way it was. Okay, Delia Nash's father was Benjamin and Benjamin was half brother to James from second wife Anna Goins okay so Delia Nash's mother was Hannah Perkins, who was the half sister of James's wife, Mary Polly Perkins. I know, right? Their mother, Mary Polly Perkins and Hannah Perkins, according to the 1896 Cherokee applications, was the, she was the daughter of Nancy. I don't know that we have any proof that Hannah, but it's just like common family knowledge that Hannah was the daughter of Nancy as well. Okay, so we've got two double match and one half match. So, Carl Stringer down to, you know, is about the generation that we're looking at, about third grade. And this generation is where we're mixing, where we're meeting. Okay, and so I'm, then I'm gonna do, so we've established my, my three lines there, or my dad's three lines. Now we're going to do Brandon, and we take Brandon, and I, you know, I'm just going to say Private Nash, and Private Unknown. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to put up who his mom and dad are, but um, anyway. So, Private Nash, or his father, was the son of Ed, I believe. You know, I should have checked this all. But this gets me up there. Ed Nash was the son of James. And Emily Slater. Okay, so there's our full match right there. Okay, but then I come from Benjamin, who is a half brother to James. Hannah 
Benjamin was the son of James, or of Thomas, old Thomas, and Anna. Okay, and so there's my third match. But now, I don't see that it's picking up the Perkins on here. So that's a little curious why it's not picking up a third match. But this makes perfect sense to me with three matches because he comes from James, or he comes from James to Ed, who was the brother of Emmanuel Command, or excuse me, of Guy. And he comes from Old Thomas through Benjamin, who was the son of Anna. So we only have an half match there. So we have a full match between Old Thomas and Emily, and a half match between Benjamin and Anna Goins. Okay, and so we're, we're working through these, and I hope they're going to be more helpful in the future. We are adjusting them. We are going to change our cheat sheet to be more appropriate for Jed match and not... If you look at the bottom here, I was noticing it was late last night or early this morning. There's some notations at the bottom of this cheat sheet. That's the one I'm talking about that I've been putting up as our cheat sheet. But however, there's some discrepancies between direct-to-consumer centimorgans and the centimorgans reported by GEDmatch. And so we really need to get an accurate cheat sheet for GEDmatch and not just something in between that's working for everybody here. I want to know because when we work some of these and we go over to GEDmatch, they're a little bit different. So I know there is a discrepancy there. I'm looking for a cheat sheet that helps us with GEDmatch only. I don't care about all of 23andMe. We're not using those. So symptom organs, you know, are based on whatever module they're using. And so GEDmatch is not using those. They're using their own, obviously. Okay, and then this week, we have been very busy on the mirror site talking about admixtures, which is like one of my most favorite, favorite things to work on. Um, and what I did was, is I put up on the group several several examples of various reportings by the same module okay so you can go over there and take a look at those and see that autosomal reporting is volatile and it depends greatly on number one what did you claim is your ethnicity if and some of these family reports will show this to you. I know Family Tree DNA does. Somebody asked me what they were a couple of months ago, and I tried to explain, but I kind of had a little bit of a hard time. If you look at your results on your dashboard for Family Tree DNA, you're going to notice that it will open up and it will give you a long list of people in various countries, what percentage of them matched your um, autosomals. But if you, when the DNA corporations ask you what, what ethnicity you are, what race you, you claim, if you say white, then they're going to compare you to mostly white European modules. If you say I'm Native American, they're going to they're going to test you against what they know as Asian panels or Native American panels. They're getting better, but they're still based on Asian, which is origin as China or the Mongoloid race, Mongoloid continent. 
if you claim you're African American, they're going to put you up against the African American or against the African um, race studies or DNA studies. Okay, so if you claim that, say you do autosomal and you say, I'm pretty much um, Native American. Okay, which Native American equals an Asian or an Austral and can be European, but anyway. You know, they can base it against an A. They're gonna what they're gonna do is they're gonna probably put you against an Asian module, the uh, the Austral Asian group, um, are unrelated to the Asian Native American, but however they are um, throughout the Americas, but we're unrelated to to this even through mtDNA. Okay, so when you get your results. And you have this long page that comes out, and it says, you know, um, England, there's only one, less than 1% people there who are Native American. This is just telling you that the majority of your DNA came back European, and so they're going over and looking at the European, and you're reporting Native American, and they're going, yeah, but there aren't any Native Americans in England. So... That's why you get that long report, and we can go through this some more, and you can ask questions about it. But that's just comparing you to your reported race or ethnic group, okay? It ha really has nothing to do with, with science. So it's just saying, are you common among your claimed people, or are you not common among your claimed people? So... Okay, and so we've been doing a lot on admixture and the different, how volatile the different groups are that test the different direct-to-consumer uh, reporting. We've gotten into several sort of heated debates and um, things such as this with the L tribe girls over there and, and they just you know, I'm sorry for it, but I've been dealing with those people for a long time. They don't understand DNA. <coughs> and they're really not wanting to claim some of their colors, so um, I can't, I really can't, you know, help them much in, in making those decisions on what they should look at and what they should research. Um, so we're just moving along. We know we have hits to the L tribe. We know we have matches over there. Not saying nothing about it, but they're real hard to work with. It is my experience. I've been unable to really work with them to break down any related familial lines because they just want to keep going back to the same stuff that, you know, maybe later on in DNA we found something different and they just kind of have a hard time with that. So, um, we're not going to worry about it. Okay, so the mirror study, the journey, is that family tree DNA. To join, to join, we're going to go over requirements again real quick. Um, to join the um, mirror project, you're going to have to submit the following things. And I mean submit them because... Um, we are collecting, I have about 66 folders right now of current people who are submitting information to me. And so I'm keeping all, track of all of that. And then what I'm going to do in a few weeks from now is I'm going to sit down and work through a spreadsheet. And I will let you know if I'm missing materials or I need more materials or Galen will let you know because we're working on that together. Okay, so the journey... required documents one 
is a Jed Com. A JEDCOM file. If you work at Ancestry, which I know a lot of you do, I have left instructions and I'll do it again if we need to on how to download your JEDCOM to your computer and send it to me. If you do not have a JEDCOM, it's perfectly fine. But I will need a pedigree and I mean a as full as you can get it. Even lines that you think do not belong. So, if you do not have a jet comp, you will have to supplement a pedigree. This pedigree must start with you. You can leave we can leave everybody private, okay? That's not a problem. This is just for us to sit down and figure our matches. Because if you start your pedigree at your grandfather, who you think is related to us, and you're comparing your kit to my kit, okay, but basing the pedigree on your grandfather we will never find each other. We will never find where we're connected because like I showed you before in that Jed match match, we were third cousins one time removed. Third being the important thing here. If we have a match as second cousins or third cousins or first cousins and you start your pedigree out at grandpa we're never going to find each other because it would not be the same centimorgan difference between his you you and his third you know and him and you so that person and you so you're not your jet com mat your jet com, your dead match number i'm so sorry your jet match number is your number and or whoever you've had tested's number you need to start their, the pedigree wherever that person is number one because their Jed match is number one. Okay, so you have to do this. If you have trouble with this, please get with me. I mean, I can help you. I do pedigrees all day long. So does Galen. But we're not going to, you know, it's, it's hard enough that we've got a lot of people to catch up with. But if you don't have these things in order, if you don't have a DNA test, there's no reason to participate. Okay, if you don't have autosomals done, there's no reason to participate because you won't have a Jed match number. And all of this is, has to work together. Okay, so we need a Jed com and or pedigree. I need your Jed match number. If you have MT or Y DNA tested, not autosomal, I need your certificates of DNA. MT and Y DNA are not included in GEDmatch. You can, you can buy the upgrade and get the family finder, excuse me, or Ancestry's equivalent, or 23andMe's equivalent. But Y-DNA and MT-DNA will not be qualified to upload to GEDmatch. Okay, so these, this right here is unbasically related to the rest of this. But what this does right here is vital. This is vital to our study. MT DNA and N and Y DNA established progenitors. And I know we've been talking about this all week. 
and I'm just gonna and I've been corresponding with um, let me get off on the mtDNA and yDNA in just a minute let me finish with these requirements I need a JEDCOM and or a very complete pedigree that starts with you I need your JED match number if you've done MT or yDNA on yourself or your family uh, these all need to be presented to me as well with a pedigree or a JEDCOM this certificate will include your haplo assignment And um, some of you have done, have gotten your haplo assignment, but it was through an autosomal test. That is not good enough because that is subject to change once your Y or your MTD is, MTDNA is done. So don't rely on that haplo group that you were assigned when you did some autosomal testing because that is not a complete mtDNA or yDNA study and they will tell you right on your report that this is subject to change once you have your mtDNA and your yDNA done on a certificate so we need these things JEDCOM pedigree that starts with you whoever this JEDCOM belongs to that pedigree needs to start at that person mt or yDNA if you or your family you've done testing either way for your brother or your father or your mother or whomever we need these and we need a pedigree that goes with it because I'll tell you what we're going to what we can do with these in a minute and 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 um okay Lynn would like to have your haplo number uh or your haplo assignment haplo assignment comes with this but some of the other corporations give you a um temporary or sort of maybe we think it probably is this um, she wants that and so I don't have any use for it um, with yDNA and mtDNA because they come with one okay and we strongly suggest that you test with family tree DNA we're not promoting any one is better than the other it's just that our study happens to be with family tree DNA and that is where we need to you know we need to all be compared with the same over there now the purpose of this whole genetic handbook the journey thing is is number one for me for my end of the study is to establish maternal and paternal lines. This can be called a surname line. What we're trying to establish here is progenitors. The progenitors of all these different red bone, melungeon, lumbi, I mean, chair raw, any of these families that are mixed blood is to document why DNA because we are having so many people who are a surname but however whenever we look at their Y DNA they were not that surname line they were married into that surname line and they took that surname they were not they did not inherit that surname father to son because of their origins because of their haplo assignment when you have an e haplo regardless that those people did not come here with a North European surname. And right now we're having a lot of discussion with Kara Brewer and them over, you know, this 
and the basses are in a really bad shape, come to find out. When, when we, and Jack Owen's study is in a mess, to be honest with you, they all are because of really seriously bad genealogy. We've got lots and lots of families who claim my grandfather was Thomas Goins. Okay, fine. But which Thomas? Okay, there was several and they were all different men from different progenitors. But they're all interrelated. The same with the Bass and the Nansamons and all of this. There is a hundred, you know, a hundred bass men, Y DNA lines, who who claim my furthest my furthest ancestor on this Y DNA line, which if you watch the other ones, you know what a Y DNA line is. It's a surname line, is Levi Goins. Because that's what I've always been told and that's what it says at Ancestry and well which Levi Goins because if you're also familiar with the Goins family you also realize that there was a whole lot of Goins men who named each other for their relatives who was a Levi or who was a Jesse or who was a Daniel or who was a Thomas or a William I my grandfather my grandfather William Collins Goins and at least 12 of his male siblings were all named William something Goins so when you tell me I come from William Goins, you're really not telling me a lot because what you're, what you're doing is kicking a door open to about a thousand Williams. Well, which William, at what time period, in what area, and on top of all of this, our people were nomadic. And so they might have been born over here in South Carolina, but before they were five years old, Mama and Daddy went through two or three states or what are two or three states now was territorial land then. So it's extremely important to establish maternal and paternal lines. So we're never going to get this worked out unless people buy an MTDNA and start understanding this concept. The Bass family, they have hundreds of men listed under there. And they're all matching Y DNA lines. One says they come from William. One says they come from Jeremiah. One says they come from, I forgot what the other one's name was. It was an unusual name. But they don't match Y DNA. So somewhere the genealogy is wrong. And we're trying to establish progenitor lines and get the Y DNA lines straightened out. Autosomal is not going to help us do that we're all interrelated through endogamy and, and, and we are seriously interrelated. So number one number one goal of the mirror group is to establish progenitors male and female and couples like we just did with Brandon you know I know because I've done good genealogy and I've also looked at the Y DNA for the Nash family and the MT DNA. And I know that Thomas Nash was married to two women, Emily Slater and Anna Goins. But the other problem with Anna Goins is you know, you know, you got specific problems to each case. The problem with Anna Goins is is I really don't know if she was a Goins or she was married to a Goins because Anna was, you know, almost 30, estimated almost 30 years old before she married Thomas Nash or at Thomas Ash. Ash, you know, Ashoka is what they called him in the uh, Cherokee applications. You know, he was obviously Native American. Cherokee is what they said. And I know that because they came out of those Overhill Cherokees and the Chickamaugas and all of that. But we can get into all of the Nashes in another time. But um, establish progenitor and paternal and maternal lines. And then number two goal, number two goal is to connect cousins.
and rebuild our trees. The only way we can rebuild trees is to for you guys to participate and present us with pedigrees and jet comms where if you don't know how to build a pedigree, I can take your jet comm. I have the software here and I can build it for you. And so it's simple as that. Uh, and then we can take a look at it. All right. And so we work through we work through some difficult kind of things we had going on this week. And I hope you guys uh, please watch these videos. And I know you know not everybody may like me or whatever or think my opinions or what have you. Um, and that's okay. Um, but the material that we're presenting is, is really good. And it, this is the journey is actually the first one, first study, DNA study of its kind ever among our people. We have had the Lumby study, which was based on Y DNA. We've had um, the Jack Goins, which was based on Y DNA. We have the Sizemore group, who's based on Y DNA. Um, we have some of the other groups have pulled in the maternal lines too, but they're still confusing because not, not a lot of people know how to trace their maternal lines. And we'll we'll get into a lot of that, you know, detail on chasing your maternal lines. But this the journey is is going to be a handbook that is going to help you walk through all of these things. If you are not DNA testing no sense in participating or attempting to participate if you don't have a jed match number you know it's it's this is a workbook to work genetic genealogy and so we hope you'll join us it's going to be so much fun we got to get through these rough parts and i know we can do it um and bring everybody up to speed and and get things going the way that we want and i think that we will learn a lot from our genetics and from our cousins who have a puzzle piece here and I have a puzzle piece over here um, just like Kara Brewer who, um, she is a match to me which would when I sat down because I don't have her jet gum or a pedigree yet maybe Galen has it I didn't use it um, but also because they are under the misunderstanding of paternity um, she's connecting back to a line that did not match us. I know she matches me, and I know she matches my Y line. But how she got there, from there to her, is, is really uh, unknown to me. And um, I do know that we have produced some affidavits. She has I produced affidavits to her that, that clearly show a pattern of illegitimate children. And so when you get to the bottom of that mess, it's like, well, who was the progenitor? Obviously, it was one of our men, and we are connected there. But um, you can't tell it from the affidavits. So, but then she goes back, and, and the, the normal genealogy associated with this male line is attached to someone who didn't match us okay and why dna so this is extremely important i understand that say you know it's um say like a burgess you know or in this case it was a goins in her family and she doesn't have any recollection of anyone around who who is a male from that specific line and so it's very difficult for her uh, to establish her y dna lines but that's that's the big that's the big deal in this thing is that you got to go out and hunt those people i do it every day 
I mean, I finally got a hold of Howard Goins the other day, and he was like, sure, I'll give you my DNA. I was like, thank you, because that helps us establish a separate line of Goinses, and they're Choctaw Goinses. They came off the big black band, um, big black band of Choctaw over there, and um, our patriarchs were murdered by uh, the Native American Choctaws whenever they arrived at Mayhew Mission, and so we don't have a lot except scattered bits and pieces to try to put the family back together. And so your DNA is important to us, and your pedigree is important to us, and your, your, your participation is vital to the journey. And so we, we hope that you will join us and that you will decide to DNA. Now next year, whenever you buy, you will have to purchase the journey a book. And it is a workbook that you will work in, just like a school workbook. And it'll have your membership. It includes your membership fee for one calendar year from January to December. And so, um, that will get you some things and it, we will take a certain portion which will be decided by the board of any of the membership dues that come in and we will apply those to the general fund and then those general fund will be available to our members to do further testing. You know, so um, it's, it's going to be great if we all participate and, and get in there and work on our genealogies and our pedigrees. and and kind of start thinking a little besides whatever ancestry said I am or they've hooked up this record to my grandfather which might or might not be your grandfather so um, the naming patterns is a nightmare as well anyway thanks for joining me again I hope that this was helpful um, Marilyn Baguette Kobliaka is supposed to be here Friday and so I'm going to be working heavily on the Goins book and um, her and I are gonna, we got a, a think tank going on here. We've gotten some DNA results back and um, some Y and MT, and we're gonna pull it all together. And sooner or later, we are gonna get going to book one, two, and we've started on number three. We have well over 1,600 pages. Uh, and book one is about 600 pages. And because of some different why DNA tests will kind of hold up on book one again. So book two may come out before book one does. We'll just have to see. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us again, and we hope you will join us on the journey. Galen and I appreciate all your participation and input. Thanks. See you next week.